is you've got these teams, they've got overclock, they've got afterburner, flak jacket, danger close grenades are actually going to come into play here. Punish the teams that use overclock instead of flak jacket, toss those nades down. We are on board with complexity as they're going to go ahead and go for a quick plant in this one. And it's going to be up to phase to go for the 4v4 retake. Oh, Lace Shield spots one player going over near back. Barnes is going to play it slow and patiently, but he has a chance to really open up the round for his team. Timing is going to work against them here as he gets taken out first blood. It's going to be Zuma opening things up. Bomb, of course, already planted at the B bomb site. Phase now working on the retake. Phase still looking for this retake. Kills now going in favor of Cole. They've got another trade. They've spotted one of the rails, and it's going to be up to attach to win this 1v2 accuracy. He's ready, though, as he's going to go ahead, cut down attach and take that round for the side of Cole. Here it is again from Accuracy. Yep, easy enough kill here. Uh, attached, trying to make the trade happen through small room, but it's a good start here for Complexity. Let's see if they can keep the momentum rolling though. Cole up one to zero as they're gonna go ahead, take that first round. As we can see how FaZe can battle back in this next one, FaZe going to be on the offensive side as uh, right now, We'll go ahead and hop on board with them as they push out. Okay, so this Jeeva once again makes it through. It's going to be attached though. He opens things up first pick with a sniper rifle, and that's going to force Complexity to play a little bit differently for future defensive rounds. Let's switch back over to attach, see if he can find another kill with this weapon. And look, he's actually holding his flank with it, which is pretty funny to see. Typically, you want to see him picking middle map, but hey, you can't get caught off guard. Cole with aches on the team, always going to try to bring out something crafty. Accuracy at this 3-0 no start. You know he wants to play for streaks. Attached, still looking for maybe a second pick of this round. Phase, they've made the decision on where they want to go. They've spotted one in back alley. They know someone's in A as well. They've got information. Can they execute on it, though? Take a look on the flank as well. It's going to be Accuracy once again. Going to be pinching in Phase and essentially trapping them towards this side of the map, but they, they don't know where Clacer's located. Clacer could make kind of like a round-saving play here as it's going to be Ricky finding the kill into Enable. That's also going to drop the bomb. Oh, gosh, and look at your mini-map now. Phase have nothing to work with. Attach now dead. Clayster one versus three, making it one on two. Still using that Shiva, which worked out so well for him back in that hard point. But with this little time, obviously the defense oh, knows he's the plan. Wait, oh. it's going to be a 1v1. Clayster versus Accuracy right now. And Accuracy is coming closer and closer to the bomb site. There's a chance they're going to meet him right here with the oh. card. Clayster can't get it done. Complexity winning the second round. Looking good so far <laughs> in this search and destroy. And who is it again? It's this man, Accuracy, the guy that when you think of Cole as a lineup, maybe not the guy that comes to the forefront when you talk about what these guys bring to the table, but if he can remain consistent, if he can just follow some of the leadership on this team, I think this is where Complexity can see a lot of success. And you saw his class setup as well, not using Dead Silence as that third perk because, you know, there, there's like a, a, a very loud crowd and a lot of outside noise here. You can cut out that perk and it could allow you to maybe run like perk one green, like Flak Jack and Overclock to be safe. Yep. Complexity again on offense. They're at a two round lead. This is a game that you'd expect them to have to beat FaZe in. They're looking solid so far. FaZe is playing a little bit more passively again. So far, it looks like they've been basically just giving up this B site for the most part. I want to see though if they play a little bit more aggressive on it. Maybe not let this objective go down off the start. Boom. That's Zuma with the first blood. Second kill as well. Cole's round collapsing in front of them. God, Clayster being so annoying near that back rock. He's able to gain so much early information, what? but Ake, he's going to open up the round. He can't finish the second kill. It's a 1v2 now for Lacefield. Lacefield has a lot of information to work with, which I think is a silver lining here for, for the Cole team. Wow. Makes it a one-on-one. -on -one. Clayster with the trade. Phase now on the board. As he was such a nuisance, you mentioned how annoying he was. He wasn't really getting kills until the later half of that round, but he was putting so many shots into Cole, they could never go for that plant. Zuma with the first two kills, a perfect round from FaZe. Yeah, he, he puts damage onto players, even though he doesn't finish the kills, as you're saying. Just his presence near that back rock, he gained so much information that he could just instantly relay to his team. They kind of trapped complexity there on the bomb site, and as you're saying, it's just not a comfortable position to be in no. when you're going for a bomb plant like that. Now, what do FaZe do on offense? Because last time they pushed a site, but then they kind of got hesitant. They were playing around the sniper a little bit. It just didn't work out. This time, they've made up their mind. They're soaring on out. You can just tell they've switched up their, their positioning. And well done. By pushing that player back, Rock, they secure this site as theirs. They're going to look for more as well. They've got the number advantage. Seeking a second kill. There it is. Almost has three. Get him, Zuma. Does have to reload, but either way, phase beautiful start to this round. I mean, that's exactly what you gotta do. Isolate that play over here in the back rock. Zuma will get caught out of position, but the bomb will get planted over near the B site. You got Clay watching the flank. Let's swap over to attach. That's just gonna be phase setting up in their post plant positions. And he's really not playing to engage someone. He's just trying to look for any information he can get. Phase still with the bomb planted with the number advantage. All sides against Cole. Nice job by Ricky to at least get an entry. 
He's got a Tash being spotted oh, as well. No. Some shaky shots. Just like that, it's Clay in the 1v3. Oh, thanks for all the part here for FaZe. Oh. And it's going to be a 2v3 what? clutch up for Complexity. Despite the bomb being planted for FaZe, they have positioning to work with. They, they don't play for their trades. They get isolated and they, they just get overwhelmed with their positions there. Clay the whole time was basically in rails. He, he, he didn't exactly know where to position himself. Ricky just makes the play happen in that round with the RK5. Shows why it's arguably the best pistol in Black Ops 3. Ake's just playing his life, making sure he's there for the trade. In this scenario, maybe Clay gets that kill glitches out to play his life yeah. to make it a one-on-one, -on -one, but either way, that's a round that FaZe have to win. Yeah, I, I feel like they lose that round once they give up control of Varn. That, that's such a key position to hold, especially when you're attacking order to be bombsite. It just gives you such a good no. vantage point. You could just tell by how FaZe were set up. They weren't expecting Zuma to get yeah. first blooded right there by Ake's as Ake's has peeked that back window. Caught him off guard, and now Cole take a round that they should have won. Man, it's going to be three to one round advantage. And look, how, so, back look on how slow they're going right now because they're so afraid of Clayster at that back rock. And yep. they're going to start to maybe back Ooh. up. But there's the opening pick. Ake takes down Clayster. Now they need to pounce onto this positioning. And they're going to do just that. I'm loving the shot calling that I'm seeing so far from Complexity. They will get the number advantage and the objective down. Heat wave will be earned as well. So they've, they've got some tools to work with. First challenge comes in. Attaches there. Nice cleanup by Lacefield to make it a two on two. He's being pressured from behind. It's Zuma catching him off and guard. And where's the help? And, and all the way at the end of Rails is Aches. He got the entry. Yeah, now no he's the, the, you have a negative chance of winning that engagement. FaZe Clan retake the site with ease, especially showing some Great prowess there after being first blooded to still swing that round in their favor. Yeah, kind of the, the same situation as last round, except just reverse rolls, right? Yep. Complexity, they find the opening pick over near the back rock, they push up, they get the bomb down with the man advantage, and then it all kind of falls apart. They, they get picked off. You, you get some good trades here on the side of phase, and Abel is able to spot Aches, who's kind of way out of position. Sure. I mean, he's watching the flank, but it, it leaves Lacefield in a spot where he just gets overwhelmed by two players. Aches kind of reminded me of the same spot that... that Clay was in yeah. in the round prior. You just get caught out in rails. You've got submachine guns and great up close pistols pushing you. You're kind of a sitting duck, and it showed right there. As FaZe still continuing to keep this close, you can hear no, no blast suppressor okay. coming out from some of these players. They're going to be relying a lot on sliding and FaZe with this setup. It looks like they're playing for a pick. And, and you see how the early sniper rifle presence from Attach has kind of altered the defensive setup here from Complexity. Nobody really comfortable at kind of checking the middle of the map. They're all kind of playing pretty far back here on the side of Complexity. So what happens? Look at your mini-map. Clay gets the first blood near that ace site. Kills someone back alley. What's FaZe's reaction? Boys, it's oh. time to go. Egg says, hey, I can shoot through that tin wall. Thankfully, Zuma's there for the trade. Uses his camo in the process as well. Yep, that will put FaZe in a three on two. Where do they go from here, though? Because Cole already, they have the players here that they need. Lakesfield finds one. Enable, makes it a 2v1. Challenge coming in from Zuma. Nice. Gets it done. Some beautiful shots. Zuma, he can use an AR. He can use a sub. You know he's going to turn up for his team, and he did it in that round. And it kind of unfortunate circumstance there for Clay. He was kind of drawing the attention from the player back alley. I, I feel like they knew that Zuma was going to use his camo to try to pick off that player back alley, but Clay just gets wall banged through auto. But despite that, FaZe are able to walk away with a round win, and, and round by round, FaZe have now found their way back into this game. This is where you need the leadership of complexity to get themselves back on track. Their three to one lead has now vanished. You've got a phase squad that when they played around the first blood, typically these rounds have worked out. You saw it right there from phase. It's Clay that does it. They execute on A and they win the round. How do they pick Clayster off this back area though? They, they could do the same thing they did. You could use psychosis maybe to distract them. They're playing for information. They look spot him. Uh, look so he that. almost gets one burst right there. He, he's going to back right on up. But look, I'm going to switch over to Lacefield real quick because I want to point out his specialist. He's got decent progression towards his kinetic armor, but it's shaping up like this is search and destroy. It's going to go the distance. So this might be the, the key specialist ability that makes the difference in the entire game. Obviously, he needs to continue to play well, though, because some games you don't even earn that kinetic armor. This one does look like he's on pace to get it. They've begun to take control of this auto area of the map. Faze still commanding middle, which has worked out for them so far nice. in this game. Nice job by Lacefield, though, to risk his life to make sure he can at least give his team a chance to get that objective down. 30 seconds remaining. How does Complexity choose to play this when Faze are breathing down their neck? It's going to be that. Zuma peeking in, takes down the bomb player. Another player there gets oh. two. Oh. Zuma, he's going to earn streaks in the process. Go for the third. His Jeez, teammate Clayton's are going to clean it up, and, and that's just a clean break from FaZe as they take the lead. Zuma is 11 and 4. He's earned himself some more streaks. Here it is again. Zuma just holding the angle. Gives time for Clayster to soar on into dark. Gets the quick headshot. FaZe now with three rounds in a row. Take 
the lead in this game. They want this 3-0 real, could, real bad. They could blow the game open right here. I mean, let's just switch back over to Zuma. He's 50 away from this Hellstorm missile. And, and what's stopping FaZe from maybe playing around a dart right here? Hey, they love playing for picks. A dart is a very useful tool to do just that. Does look like, though, they'll play a little bit more aggressive. They're soaring on out. Heat wave used by Ricky. That's going to stop Clayster in his tracks. But that's the thing. FaZe have stuck together through this whole game. So they're immediately there for the trade. And you always have preached that when an offensive team makes the numbers even, when it's a three-on-three, -three, that helps the offense more. It spreads the defense thin. And now they're, they're actually going to use the dart here. So let's switch over to Zuma. What oh, kind of gosh. information you can gain? Meanwhile, it's going to be Axel on the flank. He's going to get an engagement. Dart should find one player here. Actually doesn't clean up the kill. Whoa. Severely weakens him, though. And I think Enable has spotted Axel on the flank here. That's big. Uh, that, that's a score streak that can no longer be used. And this is still a better, very winnable round for Cole. I think Especially when Axel has positioned himself He's got himself in a spot that he can drastically shift this round his team's favor, but unfortunately, <laughs> look at how awkward of a timing it was. He's still saying, guys, I think they're I got him trapped in auto. Yeah, I got him. I, I, I'm ready for the pinch. Meanwhile, look at your mini map. He could not be more off from where face off. And, and look, if you're the guys on the eight bomb site, like you're peeking out through the side door, you don't see anything. Right, and they're even going to pitch it on auto. They need to begin rotating now. Accuracy is going to get caught way out of position. He's all alone. This is going to get phase the man advantage, but only 16 seconds remaining and enables the bomb carrier. Aches still making his pressure felt towards this A site. There's two big kills. Wow. Was that all three? Yeah, we're, we're going to see it again in the round ending kill cam, but the, he gets heat wave in the process as well. So both teams using their heat wave in this round. Oh, Aix is going to find two kills, one right after another here, using the bomb. That, that's really <laughs> the best cover you could get here. See, the interesting strat by FaZe. They're using each other for cover. Oh, and unfortunately, okay. that doesn't work. I've tried, tried that not, many not times. A good play. No, not a good play. A little miscommunication. The big thing to point out, I do believe that that stopped Zuma yeah. on a streak, so no Hellstorm will be earned. The dart essentially wasted, and now Cole, instead of it being 5-3, to three, have brought this game back in a tie game. And now Aix with Camo, he could open things up here down tracks. He's going to go ahead and pop I love this. spot that one player near the back. I love this. His teammate just be in a distraction. Aix looking for first one. Oh! Clayster glitches out. Aix looking for the kill. He's going to take some fire himself. His teammates here to follow up. First of all, comes in as they take down attached kills, not being traded between the teams as it's a 3v3 for the time being. They've got to call out, though, that they didn't kill the Camo player. Aix is still here. Do FaZe recognize that? I, I, I do believe ah. so. Enable with the RK5. What a hold and a great glitch from Clayster. Instead of first blood being on the phase, it's phase striking down Cole. They have the number advantage. Beautiful nade from Ricky to even this back out. He could find another kill here, but Accuracy moving in for the trade. He's going to find one behind oh, the bomb site. No. He crouches and loses the engagement phase. Now on uh -oh. map point. Clayster just stood up. Yeah, let's go to his team. He's ready to go. He's fired up because this phase squad, top four this entire year, maybe top eight here and there. Not the squad we saw in AW, but I can tell you one thing. Clayster knows how much is on the line, especially with COD Champs coming up with Call of Duty XP in just, what, three and a half weeks? This would be a great momentum swing for a phase team that's been doubted by many throughout this year. Oh, for sure. And take a look at Zuma real quick. I know we pointed it out a bit earlier. 13 and 5. Guys, His presence is, is definitely felt on the He's map right now. I mean, simple as that. With the lightning, I don't think it's been pinged. So, Phaser's going to play around that, try to spot where they can maybe see this complexity team. I want to see them take command of rails, ping the lightning, immediately control top barn, and plant the bomb at B. The thing is, like, attach only use yep, that sniper right for one round. They're going to use the lightning strike here. That's going to force accuracy to back up off the rocks here. They're even going to call it in. But Nabel should push forward now. Yep, there yeah. it is. You force him out of that back positioning. He's going to go ahead and take control once again, and Duel might get caught out. But here's the only thing I don't like. They didn't follow it up quick yeah. enough. They still don't have this objective planted. And look at the mini map. Cole are ready for this. Cole are absolutely ready for this. Well, action about to go down near the bomb site. And Evil's actually all one. He's going to challenge Aix over near top barn, get some good shots in, but he's forced to back down as well. Still the objective yet to get planted. Now, once again, they're going to oh, push it back. Rob Zuma. Zuma with the intro kill there onto accuracy, but he's immediately traded out. Still a very winnable round for FaZe. What do they try to do? 25 seconds left. Enable gets caught with his pants down. Why not just back up it's and play? Clayster and Attach all by themselves. The bomb's in an awkward spot. I think FaZe just threw away both their score streaks. Okay, Attach will find the kill onto Ricky there, bringing it down to He's a 2v2, but there's only 10 seconds remaining in the round. They have to get the objective down. Actually, go down over near top barn. Attach moving it for the trade, but it's going to be this. Wastefield forcing the round 11. And now Kinetic Armor. If FaZe lose this game, I cannot wait to hear the analyst's thoughts because that was a couple very sloppy offensive rounds from FaZe. Their offense this game has been very hit or miss. 
and you can just tell where it's been wrong. That lightning, they need to push that quicker. They need to get that bomb planted. By the time Cole have retaken Barn, FaZe have already kind of done what they needed to do at that site, and now they're just playing to get the kills to close out the round. What round did I 11, say earlier in the game? What did I say earlier in the game, Jack? Kinetic armor could be the difference between who wins and loses this game. Wayfield has that special ability available, he ready to go. He's gonna turn the corner. Ooh, he's gonna oh. he's gonna pop it out of panic, just trying to stay alive. But he needs to push the issue. He gets the EMP, no more kinetic armor. But actually, he's there for first blood, taking down Clayster as Complexity pushed in. They have control of the bomb. The work has already been done. No kinetic, but hey, first blood is a good trade. Nicely done by Azuma to bring it back to a three on three. I do believe Listen, Cole, plant the bomb. But that's send, exactly. Send Ricky on the flank. It's almost a pace issue right there for Cole. Oh. Attach gets a second kill now for FaZe. They know where Aix is. Ricky's kind of the lone man. Ricky just shot. They know he's Ninja coming down the man of the street oh, here. Oh gosh, yeah. It, this looks like a, a phase round as long as they can just work together. There it is from Enable. Ricky, one on three. He's tacked up. Oh. Somehow. Don't count Ricky one. out. Goes oh, to the trade. No ammo. ammo left. FaZe win it in round 11. Placer, proud of his team. Yes, he did get first blooded, but it's a 3v4 retake led by that of attack. Look, it was a good recovery from FaZe despite getting first blooded. A great EMP from Placer as well to shut down the kinetic armor from Wayfield. And you just get a massive performance from Zuma right there. 16.